Hello, everyone. Today, I wanted to talk about long. We talk a lot about air travel because of its complications and unpredictment uh, that we face uh, every day traveling by plane. I hope you all are safe as you travel uh, this summer. Uh, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about van travel. We don't talk much about van travels. Uh, I'll be doing a little bit longer van travel this this summer at the end of at the end of June. Um, there is a abilities expo uh, near where I live, and I did get transportation to go. So yes, <laughs> it's fun. I learn a lot of things, meet a lot of people, and so um, I'm just kind of thinking, you know, in my mind what I need to bring to that trip. And um, so I wanted to share that with you. I know that I'll be taking uh, a few things with me. Uh, I think I will be taking a lunch bag. Um, I'm bringing my own lunch, so a flexible lunch bag. And uh, that'll be cool so I can have lunch down there. So uh, I know my driver might be going to see her family. So So that'll be cool. And um, then uh, also uh, the van will be there on site, I'm guessing. Uh, but uh, then uh, I also want to take a few things for myself. So it's the lunch bag. I know I'll be bringing maybe a sweater, maybe uh, a raincoat. Just depends on the weather. Uh, but since it is a long trip, I want to prepare. And I have a pouch in the back of my wheelchair, so I'll be putting, you know, a rain, rain stuff in the back. Uh, one will be a rain coat, and the other one is already in there. It's to cover my joystick because joysticks are not waterproof. <laughs> None of them <laughs> that I know of. So it's important to keep those covered when you are traveling and it is drizzling or raining. You want to keep that covered. So... So I have my cover already in the back. Uh, I won't need my flag because she'll be just dropping me off at the door, I think, and and then she'll she'll leave. Uh, water, water is really important. Uh, I don't have an appropriate container for water right now, so I'm going to purchase that uh, a nice plastic water container that will keep the water cool. So kind of like a thermos, plastic. A uh, cup for myself, so I'll be doing that um, to keep it in my wheelchair. Uh, for me, it's it's important to be drinking water. For other people, it's it's not. Uh, but there's also accessible bathrooms along the way and at the expo, so um, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's see what else. So rain gear, weather gear. <laughs> Uh, food gear, you know, my, my thermos, my, no, it's not a thermos, it's a, just a, a thermo launch bag, <laughs> let's call it that, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then some water, uh, anytime you're traveling by van, it'll be important to do water. And for some of you, it won't. You'll get water along the way, or you'll get water at the expo or wherever you're going. So, up to you. But when it's a long trip like this, you you want to a little bit over prepare uh, and make sure that you have everything you need. Like today is a very cloudy day. If I were traveling today, I would be rain gear up to wazoo, <laughs> up to wazoo. So. Um, a phone, of course, a cell phone. Uh, one of the things I always make sure I have on me is my medical brace. Uh, I don't know if you all have one. Uh, medical bracelet is sometimes very helpful. It doesn't have any information on the exterior, as you can see. It's behind, it's behind this symbol, so they really have to take it off to, to read it, and it just states my name, my conditions, and um, and that's it, and a phone number. 
uh, an ICE phone number to, to call if there's questions or problems. I do tend to misbehave sometimes, so. So I wanna make sure <laughs> that <laughs> I have no plans of passing out, trust me. Uh, but if, if something like that did happen, then um, I do wanna make sure there's a phone number on there. There's a smaller one uh, that I do use uh, when I'm home and not traveling, it's thinner. This one I want it, you know, just very visible uh, when I'm traveling, so I use the thicker one. But, you know, the qu good question uh, for you all is do you have a medical brace bracelet uh, and do you wear it as often as you should? Um, I wear mine every day, you know, because of my conditions. So wherever I go, even if I'm in the house, you know, it's on me, they can read it, you know, <laughs> have fun reading. <laughs> but for sure you want some kind of identification, whether it is a regular ID. You can make up your own uh, emergency card with your picture, uh, with your conditions, and with a phone number to call. Uh, I do have one. I have an emergency card in, in my pouch that I carry around as my ID and everything else. So, you know, um, it's all those kind of things that y you want to over prepare. You know, some people just want to get in and go. <laughs> but it is, it is good to be, um, you know, uh, a preventative person and have, you know, what you need w and what you might need. So that's how I think, you know, the essentials that I need and what I might need. <laughs> so even though I don't need it, I might need it. So, you know, you, you don't want to over prepare, but just over prepare just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. So that's why I have my brace, but I also have an emergency card in my uh, pouch in case they go in there and they're scrounging around to find more information about me, uh, they can do that as well. So that's what I'm recommending for long van trips. Uh, make sure you're comfortable. Uh, cushions, if you need one, I have one under my butt. <laughs> and uh, that's really important. I might wear my back brace because it is a long trip and I don't know how many potholes we're gonna run into and I don't wanna be a pain <laughs> when I'm down there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, my back brace will probably go with me on my person so that I am comfortable and I'm, I'm not in excruciating pain by the time I get there. <coughs> so if you have any kind of braces that help you prevent pain, you, you might want to put those on uh, for long, long trips and make sure that, you know, you're just comfortable. You don't want to be, you know, all in a bundle of pain by the time you get to your destination. So again, you know, plan for the necessary things that you need, but over plan a little bit so that you have extras in case you need to reach for this or that and you have it on your person. <coughs> and you don't say, oh darn, I should have brought my pillow. Oh darn, I should have put on that XYZ brace. Oh darn, I should have, you know. So prevent the darns <laughs> and add anything that you feel that would be um, helpful to you in case any medications that you might need. I will need certainly medications for, um, no, in the morning medications, I'll be taking those, but I'll need the medications for noon. So uh, that will, you know, be, be great medications at noon. Uh, the event closes at five, so I'm sure we'll be leaving uh, sooner than that and because uh, we'll be getting there when they open and then we'll be leaving mid-afternoon, no, like around two, I guess, two, three o'clock and I'll be home in time for my 
evening medication. So, so that's one thing you don't want to skip or forget. So, <laughs> so plan for that in your long trip in vans. There's some flexibility, you know, when you're traveling in a van. So, you know, it's, it's your space. Usually the van will be familiar to you, but if this is a new van, you know, you're in a space where, where you can have your, your little pile of things that you need or that you might need. So I just wanted to put that video out there because I've never spoken about long trips, you know, in, in vans. I've always talked about planes and the difficulty we have uh, flying in planes. <laughs> now, <laughs> there are some rules and regulations that will be coming out soon, um, you know, to ramp up the services that airports need to provide to, to us, to people with mobility issues or with, with disabilities in general. So once those come out and they're a little bit more firmed up, then, then I'll post uh, some information, I'll talk about it, and, and what we need to be aware of. Uh, so I think there will be more training for staff coming up. There will be, um, you know, more wheelchairs available. I don't know if they'll, <coughs> sorry, they'll make any changes to the um, aisle chair that they use <coughs> and how they'll handle that. Um, but there are some nice rules and regulations coming out, you know, in terms of, you know, the, the, you the airplane has been always a trouble for all of us for with disabilities. And so they're going to loosen up some rules and regulations and they're going to tighten some other rules and regulations. However, I don't want to slip into that <laughs> conversation. I just want to talk about, you know, van travel. If, if you are traveling in a van with, with your wheelchair, um, there, there, are, there are things that you can do that, that will be helpful, that will, what's going to make you feel comfortable in that, that long trip. And, and my trip is not excruciatingly long, um, but, but it'll be long. It's an hour and a half down there and an hour and a half back. So that's, that's a good three hours of travel. So I want to make sure that, that I have everything that I need. And I want you to have everything that you need <laughs> and for the <coughs> driver to, to be careful careful with those potholes <laughs> because it's not fun. <laughs> I don't think for any of us. For some of you, it doesn't matter, but some for, for a lot of us, it does matter. So uh, so let's, let's have that conversation with the driver as well in terms of the condition of the roads. Uh, I don't think there'll be any construction, but that could be one thing that might happen to you in a long trip that you'll run into construction so you want to make sure that you are comfortable no matter what. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that really is, is important uh, to be comfortable. And, and that means cushions. If, if you have a special cushion that you use, you, you might want to add that to your wheelchair when, when you go. Uh, I don't have any back cushions, but some of you might have a back cushion that you might want to add. Uh, some of you might have some neck issues, so make sure your your headrest is is ready to go and in, in in the right position for you. Um, I do have some some neck issues, but we haven't we haven't addressed that yet. Um, my head shakes somewhat, so um, and you've seen that in my videos <laughs> already, so I don't have to say it. <laughs> so I try to move around so you don't notice it too much, but. But anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, I'm going to add a piece here about safety to make sure that you are buckled down, that the wheelchair is um, buckled down correctly, and that you have a cross strap. Some people don't, don't do that. Um, also, the, the strap that you have, the safety, the, the safety strap you have on your wheelchair, you, you also want to use that in case the van has to slam, the van driver has to slam on their brakes, you don't want to go flying. So that's what this safety strap for the 
um, wheelchair is for. It's not to drive you crazy or for you to think that um, you are a child. No, it's for safety reasons in the car that if the car or the van slides or, s or, or slams on their brakes for whatever reason, y you have another level of safety there. And then always, always use the, the, the strap across. You might think, oh, that's too much. It's never too much. You know, safety is crucial in the van. <coughs> you don't want to get lazy or loose with those regulations. You already know that if you're not strapped down, the wheelchair is not strapped down correctly, you're going to slide all over. And if you <coughs> notice that you are sliding, you know, that they forgot to do the front or they forgot to do the back for whatever reason, let the driver know in immediately so they can pull over and correct that. Because, you, again, in a long trip, you do not want to be um, <coughs> in a safety issue. You don't want to be uncomfortable and fearful <laughs> of what might happen <laughs> down the road. So let the driver know something's wrong. Your wheelchair is loose so they can stop and, and fix the straps. Uh, the other thing is you don't want loose objects in the van because if, if, that, if somebody hits you from behind, from the side, or the driver has to slam on the brakes, you do not want those objects flying around in the van. So that's one thing that I am a little fearful of, and I always look around to see if there's any objects loose uh, <coughs> because that, that's dangerous. Uh, dangerous for you and for the driver. So no loose objects. You've got to figure out how to buckle it down. If you have some budgie cords, and those can be strapped to the bottom of the seat or you know, to your wheelchair in whatever way, um, it's best to do that than to leave loose objects flying around, like an extra walker or groceries or whatever it is. You, you don't want those objects loose because I think the first one who's going to get hit is you, the one who's in the wheelchair. <laughs> so <coughs> safety above all. So make sure in this trip that you get strapped down well, that any loose objects get tied down, and that don't pose a, a risk for anyone. All right. Well, that's all I'm going to say about van travel. If you have any ideas or other suggestions for van travelers, uh, or s you know somebody who's going to take a long trip who's in a wheelchair, <laughs> feel free to forward this video. And um, I hope to see you all in the next one. Uh, feel free to, uh, to click on the like button there. Any comments you would like to add, that would be great. And if you'd like to subscribe, it's totally free. That would be awesome and also help the channel grow. All right, take care and always... Be safe.